Hey guys, so today we are gonna continue with this. So this is part three. So let's start. So we stopped last time from set it down in more weapon on page three. You still you have the same back as me. So let's start. It's some curious chance one morning long ago in the quiet of the world when there was less noise and more green. And the hobbits were still numerous and prosperous like Bilbo Baggins. And, well, no, I mean, no, and was standing at his door after rat was smoking an enormous wooden pipe that reached nearly down to his woolly toes. Neatly brushed, can't stop, can't stop, can't stop. If you uh, and I heard only a quarter of that what I have heard about it. I have only heard every very little of all there is to hear. You would be prepared for any sort of remarkable tale tales and adventures brought it up all over the place wherever you went. In the most extraordinary fashion. They had not been down that way under the hill for ages and ages. Not since like since his friend the old took died. In fact, and the hobbits had almost forgotten what he looked like. He had been oh all, all he had been away over the hill and across the water on business of his own since they were all small hobbit boys and hobbit girls. <sighs> all what that was unsuspecting Bobo, Bobo saw that morning was an old man with a staff. He had a top point blue hat long gray coat, cloak, and a silver scarf, which his long white beard hung down below his waist. Good morning, said Bilbo, and he meant it. The sun was shining, and the, and the grass was very green, but Gandalf looked at him, uh, from under his bush, long bushy eyebrows that stuck all out further than the brim of his shady hat. What do you mean? He said. Do you wish me a good morning or mean that it is a good morning whether I want it or not? Or that you feel Good this morning, or that it is a good morning to be good on. Oh, of them at once, said Bill. And a very fine morning to pour a bunch of tobacco out of doors into the bargain. If you have a, a pipe out of you, sit down and have a fill of mine. There is no hurry. We have all the day before us. Then Bilbo sat down on a seat by his door, cr crossed his leg, and blew his out a beautiful gray ring of smoke that sailed into the air without breaking and blew it all way over the hill. <coughs> Ready? Enough. But I have no time to blow smoke rings this morning. I am looking for someone to share in an agriculture that I am arranging and it's very difficult to find anyone. They should so at Mindy's part. We are playing quite well. And have no use for adventures, nasty, disturbing, uncomfortable beings. Make you late for dinner. I you can't think that what everybody sees in them. 
said uh, Mr. Brown, and stuck one thumb between his bristles and blew a, another even bigger small thing. Then he took out his morning letters and began to read. He don't need to take no more notice of the old man. He uh, decided to that he was not quite his foot and wanted him to go away, but the old man did not move. He stood leaning on a stick and gazing at the hobbit without saying anything till Bilbo got, got quite uncomfortable and even a little cross. Morning, he said at last. We don't want any adventures here. I keep you my tree over the hill or across the water. By this, he meant that the conversation was happening. What do you What a lot of things that you do, you know, good the morning, boy. Said Gandalf, no, you mean that you want to get rid of me, and that it was be good to I knew up. Hello, Dobby, my dear sir. Let me see, I don't think, I don't think I know the name. Yes, yes, my dear sir. I do know your name, Mr. Bilbo Baggins, and you do know my name, so you don't remember that I belong to it. I am Gandalf, and Gandalf means me. Now, the thing that I should have lived to be one to be good morning by Belladonna Hudson. As if I was feeling the two that I'm sure. Hello, Fango, look great at me. Not the wondering mood women as he who took a pair of magic diamond studs. They fastened themselves and never came undone until the order. Not the fellow who used to have such wonderful tail. The party, of daggers and goblins and giants, and the rescue of princesses and an unexpected man, for a little son, not the man that I used to make such particular excellent fireworks. I remember those old folks who used to get hot them and make some of them see. Remember, but they do look up. Ah, uh, like you the great lady. Ah, uh, me and like and you 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 he went on. Not the Gandalf who was responsible for so many fireworks and nothing going off into the pool, flew of her mad expectations, but a fear for cutting trees and to visiting the ground. For sailing in ships, sailing on the shore. Trust me, it might used to be quite a heat. I you used to upset me badly, and he has gone upon a touch. I beg your pardon, but I have no idea you brought you in business. Where else can you, should I be? Said the wizard. Oh, the thing I was pleased to find to you. Remember something about me. You seem to remember my fireworks, actually. And at, at any rate, sir, that is not about what I'll talk. Indeed, you, for you, old grandfather, took sake. And for the sake of poor Balladonna. 
I will give you what you ask for. Thank you very much. So that's the end for this month. See you next time and we'll keep going on in chapter one. See you next time. Bye.